Okay, what we want to talk about this afternoon is about um, a new process that have been uh, developed and have been implemented into the uh, top of the line software product from from Dortfish, which is called uh, which is called uh, live uh, collaboration. Live collaboration, which means uh, or as far as the use case is concerned, is more about how can we, thanks to Dortfish technology and, and 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 local network, how can we stream video live or near live uh, on the bench uh, or directly next to, to the coach? How can we pick signal from from a, from a television feed or how can we pick signal from a, a fixed camera system and, and feed it live and stream it live to uh, iPad technology or mobile technology, uh, which are then used for, for immediate replay or very rapid feedback into in, into or during a match or during the halftime of a match. So this is what we're going to talk about this afternoon. Uh, this presentation will be will be held by uh, by my colleague Tim Tim, uh, who's uh, who's a performance analyst by trade himself. He works for a professional club in in England, and Tim will be joining us from uh, uh, southwest of England and will be running us through this uh, different process and present us the, the, the solution. So thanks for, uh, for uh, Tim to be with us today. Uh, what we're going to more in details talk about, uh, there's two scenario or two use case that we want to break down and to, uh, to present. <clears throat> First one, and that's for me the, the most simple one, but the most direct one and the most straightforward one, which is how can we stream some video content straight onto an iPad, which is remotely connected to any uh, wire or to any any camera system. Uh, in a level two, there's uh, what we call a two-way collaboration or two-way live collaboration between analyst and coaching staff. Uh, we can also touch a little bit about that, that subject. Uh, but what we want to emphasize on this afternoon is more uh, on the level one of that process. And, and actually, the level one could be represented here with this little scheme and this little sketch whereby we see video coming into a computer or being on a network and then being processed and sent directly to, to an iPad. Uh, obviously, here we have some information about what you would need in order for such a process to work. Uh, from a technical perspective, obviously, from a software perspective, we're talking mainly and and this process and this workflow will be possible to, to be executed and to be operated from a Pro S license. Uh, if you've uh, joined our program of trial and our program of webinars since uh, beginning of uh, April, uh, you might have been assigned with a, with a Live S license. So actually Live S license is the uh, addition software which is just below the Pro S. So you might not be able to, you won't be able to do this whole, uh, this whole process that we're going to present today. But if you're in a situation that um, allow you to test it, don't uh, hesitate to get back to us and we'll upgrade your live as uh, trial into a ProS license that you can also try that out with your own system. Um, I mean, being in a, in, 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 a, in a possibility or in a position to test that process will require you to be but to have access to some um, hardware system and, and fixed camera installation, which all will be, uh, I mean, the protocol of that camera system, as far as broadcasting and streaming the information will need to be RTSP, RTSP. And then uh, we will um, obviously see some of the feature uh, with uh, uh, or through the presentation of, uh, of uh, Tim, presentation that will start in a, in a short while. Uh, and as I said, the information, the most important information is that you need a Pro S license, not a Live S, Pro S license in order to operate that, that process. Okay, um, a couple of more information regarding our um, webinar series. Um, this one today is maybe the number, well, maybe the number 10 issue of a, of, a, of a full series we've been uh, we've been carrying on for um, April and May of this year. Uh, most of the presentation have been recorded and are now available on uh, on a website on a web page where you can uh, retrieve them and play them back as as your ease and as your convenience. 
Um, what I'm going to do later on, as soon as Tim will have started with his presentation, is I will add again the URL, the web page URL, uh, onto which you're going to retrieve all those webinars. I will type it down in the chat box, and you will be able to uh, play it and get back on it, and uh, just just retrieve all those webinars uh, that are that have been that have been recorded and are now available for you. The first thing to be aware of it's about using. Um, the collaboration tool using an external bit of software uh, called Dartfish Express to connect up to the main ProS software on your on your computer to have that live collaboration. Um, so to have jointly two bits of software working at the same time or more on the on the on on a game on an event on a sport um, that are connected up to the same uh, stream. So the same camera, whether that's an IP camera, protocol camera. Uh, generally RTSP, as we've said at the beginning of this. So there are other cameras that the software will take on uh, as an open network video interface for an IP camera also is an other choice that will work within uh, the software. But today's example will be an RS, RTSP stream example. So if I click on here on my iPad onto my Dartfish Express, this is uh, the interface for the, for the app. And this is where we'll be doing a lot of our other stuff in terms of the live collaboration and joining uh, a live collaboration that we've started on the main software. So that's just so you're aware, uh, and if you're following this along, have that ready, uploaded, logged in, uh, and ready to go. Um, I'm going to jump across here into my main software um, that hopefully you can all see. Uh, the first real part of this is now understanding that we're in the live section of the, of the software, not the replay area. So the live area is where we can start to capture video from live streams. Uh, generally, if we went onto this, it would turn on my webcam uh, and would start recording me on the webcam or any other kind of USB camera into the computer. But for, for today, we'll be using an RTSP, RTSP stream uh, camera that is in the office uh, in Switzerland. Um, and first port of call really is to kind of find that uh, and work with that. So we, we go into here, into the live section, we then go into the source uh, and when we click on to here, you'll see this is the, actually the camera I will be using. This is another camera that I have used uh, in the past. Uh, this is a camera that we will be using. And to understand uh, and add a new camera, you go into network cameras. Uh, and now it's about adding a type of camera uh, to um, your kind of uh, itinerary or your list of cameras. So if you add in an RST, RTSP camera, um, which we would be, you just go into here, you go add. I can't actually add the camera again because it's got exactly the same IP address to show you. We go into add. Um, we would then type in the address, which for this camera is uh, RTSP. Uh, you've got to follow these little bits. And then it would be 83.222.141.51. Uh, and then you've got to fill it out in exact form. So I'm just looking at my notes, 554. Just so you understand the, the information that you have to put in. This is all available, by the way, on your actual, on your um, IP camera when you buy it through the kind of uh, the manual. Um, if you don't actually know your IP address, you can actually just download a free bit of software uh, type into Google IP Finder or something like that. There's a free bit of software there that you can download. There's probably different ones there. Um, and then you can actually search for any IP addresses that are live uh, within your network. Um, but anything connected to the network, you, you can find that IP address and then kind of work backwards because you can see what a mobile is, what a computer is, and actually what looks a little bit weird. And that generally is a camera. Um, the camera name would be whatever you want to call it. Um, this is just an example. And then there would be for our camera, uh, a password and login, which generally when you set up a camera will have a default password and, set, uh, um, and login. Um, and then you can change it to whatever. OK, and when you press OK, it would then add it into here, uh, which is exactly the same as this one in terms of um, uh, the camera settings. And then you hit apply. That would add that you press OK. Um, and then the list would be here and then you just go and click onto the camera that you're looking to find. And there we have, hopefully, as you'll see, uh, the stream from the office um, of a game uh, that happened quite a while ago, but uh, that, that is capturing 
at this moment. So that could be replicating, for example, a camera within a stadium, broadcast cameras potentially that we're working at live at a game. And that's kind of what I want us to, you to put in that scenario at home where you are now at work. This is a live game that we're in and we're trying to prepare uh, for it in advance. So we have our our stream. We'll tick that to on. So now that is the camera that I want the live section of Dartfish to uh, be using. Um, you might have to refresh this uh, if the camera hasn't come up automatically. So just remember to refresh that. You've just added it. Because our mine was added, it was already there. So remember, that's a refresh button. To rescan for the camera. Okay, uh, going to close. You'll so notice now that that footage has come with us into the Live S. Uh, we, we, we can label this document whatever we want. So, you know, the game potentially or the date of, of where we're working. Um, the next bit here would be to set up uh, a session that we can actually join to. Um, but that's part of the level two part that we're jumping towards. Um, so if I stick at level one, this is where we can work on one game from an R RTSP feed. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is jump into the Express app, Dartfish Express app, to show you um, actually how it works from there. So if I just jump back onto my iPad here, hopefully you can make that full screen to begin with. Um, so linking this up to the to the iPad, um, I'll try and use the mouse at the same time so you can see where I'm clicking. Um, is to this is the default page as, I, as I've said. This is actually here. This little um, symbol here is the uh, area where we click on to go and see the uh, IP streams. So if we click onto there at the moment, the IP stream is exactly the same one that we're connected to. So if we go down to settings, this is there because it's already there because it's already been connected to. If I go into settings, which is this bottom right hand corner button, this is where now we can enter exactly the same information as what we have done on the main software here, uh, which now means we end up with this exact uh, exact same capture stream from, from the office. If I go to add another, which is this one here, below here, you'll see that I can add exactly the same types of information. Uh, so user label, whatever that might be. And then in the RSTP feed here, that is when we put in those same numbers we did earlier. So the eight, three and so forth all the way through. Uh, just to show you that on this one, if I go information on here, you can see that's the information as well. Okay. Um, so that gives you that, and that's literally what you end up with is this kind of footage here. Um, if I click out, and this is actually where now, if we were at a game, I could just watch it live, and we'll use this as a replay device in itself. So here, I could press, I press this top right-hand corner. You'll see now there's a delay, and I can actually now go, right, I want to watch this with, in a game, I generally probably look at things in a five-second delay. Uh, just because it would generally be after a shot and you want to see the build up. So we're watching this always in a five second delay, um, constantly on the game. So you'd obviously be watching the game with your eyes on your main screen, and then you might just want a secondary uh, device that's always on a replay. Uh, so you're always picking up the, the bits of information that you missed the first time to get your tagging process correct. If you want to revert back to zero seconds, you can, or you can go back even further in terms of the delay of the stream. Um, and then if you just want to return back to live, you click on live underneath it, which will re resume that live uh, interface for us. There, there is probably a bit of lag on the footage. Hopefully that's not too much of an issue. It's just because of it's in Switzerland. I'm at home. Um, I've got a great upload speed, but not a very good download speed <laughs> at home on the internet. Uh, so hopefully that's not causing any issues for you. Um, if I click back out of this, uh, and now this is probably to understand um, how to do this one-way communication uh, kind of uh, level level one. Um, I'm just pressing on the left-hand side here to open up my menu, and I'm going to go to live here. It's to start to understand these little these this this area of of the software. So at the moment, we haven't actually got a session set up because we haven't started a, a collaboration on the main software. 
So it's just to understand that if we press start recording, we can now actually start to do some tagging within it without any collaboration. So here, if I'm tagging, none of this will go on to the main software. So this is just, if I'm sat here at home, this is kind of what, or in a stadium, this is what it would look like to, to use the user on your iPad. Um, so in the top right, we've got the playlist, which you, you can open and shut, and that just tells you what events, your events playlist, so what events you've tagged so far. Um, the green button there tells me that I'm in a collaboration purely on myself, um, just joined up to a uh, interface. Um, and then there's a search bar there as well. Down the bottom, this X or cross, that is actually where we tag some events. Um, I've already set it up to say half time uh, for a reason that if I'm at a game and I'm tagging it and we're just tagging purely events on the bench. So it might be the coach on the bench, the goalkeeping coach, first team coach, maybe a scout in the stands, a technical coach. Um, I might, my task might be at the game to collect some basic evidence for the manager to present back to the players at half time. Uh, and to do that, as and when things are happening, I press on this, oh, sorry, this X here, and it will tag that event straight away for us. So we'll see that that's the tag. And actually, if I want to review it, I can press on it. Oh, sorry, I'm pressing on the screen. <laughs> If I press in like there, it will play that for us. Uh, that's that, that event again. So, um, and then if I've seen enough at one point, I click on live, and that will resume the live format. So back to the beginning of the game or back to the normal time, real time uh, event. Um, if I click another tag, you can see it's populated it again, with a timestamp and it's populated it in our timeline. So if I press on that one, it will go back to it and I'll be able to view it again. I can discard them. So if I didn't want one, for example, I can discard, delete event, yes. Um, I can click on an event and actually I can rename it as well. So maybe for example, half time uh, defenders, you know. So in terms of the, sorry, I press cancel. You know, so now, it will start to populate in those terms. If I wanted to view kind of the playlist, as it says here, you can ask it to go to the next or continue or replay. Um, so you just ask it to continue um, and that will carry on. And then you go to live and it will go back to the live, the real time. And then you can fast forward five seconds as I'm pressing here with this one or fast forward back in five seconds. So again, you've got your own, kind of uh, delayed um, stream as well, if you want it in that kind of format as well. Or you can just jump between the live uh, and, the, and, the, and the five seconds behind and in front. Uh, again, you can take as many events as you want in, in, in this, and I'll show you how to set up that button. Um, it is just one button, um, but you can uh, notate uh, and change these um, names uh, as much as you want through that descriptor. So by, as I showed you before, touching on it and now adding some description underneath as well in there. Um, in terms of that, that's kind of how this level one works. And so when I finish and let's say I have those three tags that I have there, um, when I go to finish by pressing the X in the top left hand corner, um, it will now save that recording. Um, because I've asked it to here. If that's, if that's unticked, it won't save the recording. So when I go to my videos, you'll see here, that's the video that we've just done. And if I go to click on here on play, it will open that same video up and you'll see that now I have this post, um, post recording. Let's say the game's just finished, it's half time. So the referee's blown So I'm making my way down to the dressing room or in another environment, you might have an IP camera out in the academy training pictures uh, and you're doing a half-time team talk with the players and actually you, you go down and you just want to talk to one or two individuals, which I always say is the most powerful thing, especially within development football, is you know, always concentrating on your, your kind of uh, your 
your bullseye players that you're, you're looking to, to work with on that particular occasion. Uh, for example, you might be working with Preston and you're working those strikers from, at the front of the pitch and you might just have been tagging those events uh, during the game. Um, so you, you'd have these four events and you might just select one to show a player. You might be lucky, you might have a TV screen that you can link up to with your iPad and show it like that um, within that environment as well. Um, and you'd be able to jump there and play these. So let's just say it's this first one for the defenders. You know, you'd be able to then play this this clip at that particular moment in the game. Don't worry about the lag. That's this on the the actual my my internet connection rather than anything. It's a bit zoomed in, but obviously you can zoom in and out using your fingers. That's me using my fingers on the screen of the iPad. Um, it just shows that you've got then. Uh, you know, if you need to zoom in and see more detail, you can. You've got a drawing tool as well that I've just touched on by accident um, here and it just allows you to just do basic drawings, colours, uh, some notations, angles, clocks, that kind of stuff as well. Very similar to what's on there already, which I won't need to talk about. Uh, just press that. Very yeah, cool. Okay. There we are. Um, so they're, they're, the, they're the events, and that's probably that level one that Sebastian was talking about in, in detail earlier. That's actually also on your cloud, so um, on your Dartfish Express. So I mean that this is your smart cloud area. So I would then be able to actually, uh, by clicking on here, this share icon, I could then publish to my Dartfish TV channel automatically because it's already up in the cloud. Oh, I could actually share a link, you know, via WhatsApp, um, uh, embed it within other bits of software, uh, sorry, websites or uh, email chains, that kind of stuff as well. Um, or directly to players, probably more importantly. Um, and, and then that is then within your collections for later storage uh, and you can revisit. I guess the next level really is to talk about level two, which is the collaboration of two bits of software. So we're again, this this software here that we've been working with, um, but also here. Um, so you need it to be running in this software as well, uh, and you need to join or start a session. So first of all here, there's no green or red, uh, which tells us there's no session actually pending or started. So we're just gonna join. Um, read these bits and pieces, make sure you understand um, kind of what, what this is about in terms of easy sharing, instant replay. Um, and then click start. So we're going to create a session. Uh, we're going to call this webinar. Example. Uh, you can add other bits of information. You know, generally this would be the date and the, and the two teams that are playing. Um, and then we're going to press create. Important to note this um, because I need this information on my iPad um, to join and collaborate with this session. So without it, if I get this wrong, um, it will it won't allow me to connect. And it's important to note that if you change locations, um, so different venues, this changes. Um, not all of it, but importantly, a few numbers will change uh, and you need to be on top of that. So if you try to join a session one day and it works and you maybe change location, it doesn't, it's because these numbers have changed. So always take note of this and ensure that it is the same. Okay, we're gonna press close. I can see there's one person, that's just this laptop. So it will go to two in a second. Um, if I go back to my iPad here, I'm gonna go into the live area again. A um, few bits of information here. Um, you can see that I'm connected up to Dartfish Office, so we're still using the same stream, we haven't changed that. We're gonna save the recording as well. Um, so then I've got it on my iPad. I think that's a great way of working. So then straight away you've got content and it's not just stuck on the main server. Um, I think that just empowers uh, your football staff or your, your coaching staff, whatever whatever sport you're in, to, to look at the game more and more and educate themselves, educate players and interact with players using video. And I think having it just on a PC screen is... Um, it's a great way of working, but even more powerful is a mobile device or uh, an iPad or a tablet and just working it through that as well. 
In terms of here, this is the event button that we can change. So if I quickly change uh, onto there, and you go to the settings button, which is this one. Um, and we go to here. I can change the label. So let's call this, instead of this time, now it might be post game. Press. I might change the color. So there's several colors in there we can choose. Let's go for blue. And then you can change the pre-roll and the duration. So pre-roll being when I click it, it will add on 15 seconds before I clicked it or 20 seconds. I'd always give yourselves, you know, clips that are around, especially when you're showing players, you want to add context within it. I generally want a 20 second clip so I can see what's happened 15 seconds before. So they and I can fully understand what's happened in the build up to maybe a decision or good decision or development point we want to talk about. So we're going to keep it at 15 and then the duration is 20 meaning it's 15 seconds of content with five seconds afterwards to make up the full 20 seconds of the clip um so that will then that button will appear in on my ipad and on the main uh, pro s laptop software um as i tag now it's selecting the session so tim bell four was an old session um so here, what we need to do is go into here, click on that setting again. Um, these are where those numbers come in handy from before. So if I go back into here and I click on here, I can see those numbers again. So 168.1.117, 168.1117, the port is 555, which is uh, after the, the two dots, the colon 5555. Okay, if I click connect, you'll see the sessions that have been run through this IP address before. And you'll see they're just a bunch of tests that I've done before. Um, and the one we are working with today is the example, the webinar example. So I'm just going to click on that. I'm going to click save. And now I can see that that's changed it to that. So that that would be the settings that we're now ready to join. So I'm going to press start recording in the top here. It should pick up the IP stream again. Um, like before, it's very similar. It, it's exactly the same um, in terms of its layout. Uh, there's nothing different. You can do exactly all the same things. I just zoom out a bit. Um, you know, you want to add a tag, but remember here at this point, it's adding post game press, but it won't be adding that yet on the main software because I haven't started the session. So at the moment there's two, but there's no events coming here. So this needs to, you need to hear to get everyone's code or everyone's tag from the iPad and from the computer. You need to press start recording. So here we are, we've started recording. Everything's going, let's get the live one here. Sorry about the kind of the gesturiness of it. That's the, is the internet speed. Um, the iPad probably has the better one at the moment. So here now I'm going to tag, I want to put these side by side so you can see what's working. So those two tags didn't come in. I'll make this a bit smaller. So this is the iPad, this is the computer. So as I tag now on the iPad, so I'm going to press that X here. It's now added post game and it's put it in the main bit software vice versa as I tag on the main software so I'm not sure what's happening in the game at this point I get this up live as well so you can see they're now in tandem slightly out potentially one of them is oh yeah good so there's a shot and I'm going to say it's a miss. So here, shot, and you can see the detail. Tagging panel works how it works. Um, and then when I go into my tagging, into my iPad, sorry, you can see in there, shot one uh, on there. So let's say now I'm on the iPad and I want to see that tag that's been made by the main computer. Uh, go back to full screen. Like we showed you before, you just click onto it, onto that tag. And now we'll replay that shot. 
um, the duration of these tags are the ones that are set from the main computer. So hence why that was very short. If I wanted to watch maybe this this one here that we watched earlier and the build up to the cross and the chance. It will then play it through that 20 seconds. So that's on the iPad. Um, and as tags are uh, added, um, we can then view them on the iPad as well. You minimize this. Um, and this is this collaboration, really. So that, that it's probably a good time to talk about some, some use cases for this. Um, how we've used it uh, at my club is the capture device has been disconnected. Okay. If everyone's still with me, I think uh, just lost the capture device, which would be that. If I delete recording, no problem. I will start back up. It's probably something to do with memory. <laughs> um, I, hey, Tim. Yes. Yeah, it was all good on my side. Basically, I, I, I kept listening to you. I kept hearing you. So uh, we shouldn't have any trouble here, at least on the on the voice side of things. So we should be good. We should be good. Okay, cool. I think that was more the some of the capture there. My computer struggling. Yeah. <laughs> A lot going on. Okay. Um, so here is probably to talk about some practical examples of how this can be used within uh, specifically a football setting. So at my club, how we run this is that we have uh, this either on the bench or in the stadium, in the stand, high above the, the dugouts. Uh, that will be generally operated by a coach or a second analyst. Um, so the main analyst would be uh, with this stream captured into the computer um, with the main tagging going on. Um, and then what will happen is this iPad will then go down into the changing room. We don't always uh, show any, well, we don't show anything at halftime. Um, this is then used individually for players via the coaching staff, the things that have been selected. Um, all the members of staff are connected up by microphones, uh, walkie talkies. Uh, so the bench can relay information to the first or second analyst to then tag events to then be put into um, this kind of playlist here, as I can show you, um, to then be then presented to the one or two players that need to see it. Uh, it's generally very generic information, a threat of the opposition or, not, or an opportunity to exploit. It's not war and peace. It's not 10 clips. It's generally one or two clips at best, at maximum. Um, and then post-game, a lot of this stuff can then be, as we can see here, uh, collaborated and you have masses of, of great video that you then sync down into the montage. Um, so that is one user case. Um, another user case is in training. Um, we're lucky enough to have a network at the training ground, which reaches to one of the football pitches. Um, and we have a portable IP camera that we can, that we, we borrow from a local university. Um, and that goes up, we record training and then allows the staff um, to use the iPad to tag events, rewind really quickly. Um, I guess really another workflow for this is then connecting the iPads up to, to screens within the, within the facility. The best thing is also then this footage is automatically on uh, on the network. Uh, so it's on our Darkfish TV channel. We're able to share it uh, quite quickly. Um, well, very quickly with a, with a click of a few buttons. It's then with the players in the palm of their hands post training um, and the same post game. Uh, you know, it's a very, very quick process. In terms of then adding things to the montage, um, if I just tag some events here. So back into here. So if I just add some tags, you see it's populating just below that. Um, the other way of working is the laptop does the work uh, in half time. So the laptop can go across and connect in HDMI into a computer screen. Or if you've set up a way of sharing over the network uh, to a computer that's already attached to the TV, that's the other, probably the quicker way of doing it if you're lucky enough to have that kind of infrastructure. Um, so if I minimise that, 
and then we'd be adding these to a montage so it might be these clips that we've selected uh so two five and uh, two four and six now i've got the montage i see that they're the three clips that i've selected and now from there i can watch them again um as well um and go from there so that, that and then you can go into the edit mo edit area and everyone should really work with pro s and work with dark fish that's the the cycle uh, so capturing your footage coding in either live or replay and then editing it post game uh, in there um, and then you can mess around with this playlist to then submit it that across um, and then reviewing stuff on here if you wanted to change the timestamps the durations that's all done within the main software rather than um, on the iPad software so there is that element of you need to edit some some tags that's done through there hopefully I've kind of covered the the, the two main ways of working between both bits of software um, understanding how these work hand in hand and seeing that kind of the flexibility it can give you you know there's multiple tools you don't need to use this calibration tool with a with a computer as, as we show in the in the level one it can be just used as purely a, a replay device um so if you're on the on the touchline and you just want to see an event again for clarity and you don't want to tag anything you can do that if you want to add tags you can simply just add one layer of tagging through the ipad to then show uh, to individuals or on the tv or you can go next level and do the two-way collaboration and have multiple analysts collaborating on uh, tagging. So you could actually have another computer also with the Pro S um, tagging and, and looking at different areas of the game. So you could have, for example, an in-possession and out-of-possession analysts working and collaborating and have the same information uh, collaborated together. Uh, so you can both see each other's tags. Um, really, in terms of then it up, upskills everyone it gives you a bigger workforce um to look more in depth into into the game and for me i think it's a, it's become a, a game changer in the development sense that we can educate players even quicker now with video um and for me that is what analysis really is about is providing almost in-game insights you know it's literally seconds later now we can talk about a technique uh, a chance uh, not just football related so you know it might be that golf swing it might be uh that s swimming technique it might be you know that netball shot um so immediately we can without having to to press stop rewind actually it's there instantly to us to watch with a turn of a head to see what just happened and i think that's that's the real power behind it uh, uh, uh and for me it's a great thing uh, that Dartfish should do.